Okay, how's it going guys? So, yeah, we have uh, Lord Vader's watches here, as you can tell. He clearly would be, um, I think he would approve of these particular Casios. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is a bunch of uh, negative display, uh, you know, reverse LCD um, Casios that I've got. So I thought I'd put them together in a little collection. This isn't all of my watches, but this is um, some of the ones I thought they kind of fit into a, into a kind of a, an aesthetic. They've got that kind of 80s edgy, um, you know, I guess slightly retro, slightly minimal, slightly stealthy kind of look, even though this is obviously very shiny, but it has the same sort of stealthy uh, display, minimal display. Um, I'm, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of Casios. Um, I don't just have Casio watches, but I, I, I'm a big fan, big fan. I, I really do like, the, especially the cheaper ones. There's so much to offer with Casio, so much, so much amazing value with with Casio. Anyway, so I thought I'd put together put together these few uh, watches, these six watches, and chat about each one because there's a couple of interesting uh, options here. We got everything from around about sort of two hundred dollars down to I think I picked up that one for one hundred and twenty two pounds, I believe it was, down to about sort of twenty five dollars at, at, at this end. So we got quite a, a range. Um, obviously the one thing they have in common is that they're all Casios and they're all have that negative uh, reverse LCD, which I'm a fan of. I know not everybody uh, likes, somebody prefer, a lot of people do prefer, you know, the standard um, uh, display, LCD display, which most people would agree is clearer than these, but uh, I just like these. Um, I think there's something about them that it, like, I, I can just imagine myself uh, as a kid in the playground, and if one of my mates had one of these, um, I would just be in absolute awe. Like it just immediately makes me think of the, you know, those '80s films, you know, E.T. E and War Games and Tron and, and all that kind of stuff. It just makes me, it teleports me back to that time. Like, yeah, if one of my friends had a watch with a light on that you could get wet, <laughs> like when I was a kid, I'd be like, what the hell? Are you James Bond or what? I just, I would, it would melt my brain. And so, yeah, this, this kind of thing, yeah, transports me back there. That's one of the reasons why I pick them up and I like them, I guess. Anyway, so let's, let's talk about them. So, so this is a, a very new watch from um, Casio G-Shock. Uh, it's the GWB 5600 BC 1 BER. And yeah, like I said, I picked this one for 122 pounds. So I think I think it retails for about 200 dollars, and it's very feature rich. I think I'm going to do an entire video just about that watch because it has a lot going on. It has tough solar, so you never need to buy a battery. It has multiband, so it it syncs with the atomic clock, so it's always perfectly in time. Um, it has Bluetooth, which you can connect to your phone and control everything from your phone. It has find your phone, so if you hold down a button, it will make your phone ring, so you can find your phone if you've lost it in, you know, down the back of the couch or whatever. Uh, it has a thing where you tap the button and it, it logs your position, GPS um, and time on your phone. So you can then sort of track, um, track your, I don't know, if you're on a big, on a big walk, big adventure, you can track different points or maybe like for me, if I'm filming, I can use it to stamp a position, an exact position. Uh, and then I can then go back and know that's a great spot to film from later. Uh, anyway, it's tons of functionality. Um, it's amazing, really. I mean, the the, the latest range of metal G-Shocks, which they've bought out, they're, there's you know they're quite expensive. The top one is like about a thousand dollars, about nine hundred pounds. Um, and obviously, you know, this isn't a metal watch; it's just a resin with a resin composite uh, bracelet. But in terms of functionality, this has exactly the same function functionality as the top top one thousand dollar G-Shock. So great great option for the money and it has that black minimal look um and yeah the metal ones look cool but i'm not going to spend a thousand pounds on a on a g-shock so i'm quite happy with uh you know with this i think it, it has that slightly matte black which i'm as you can probably tell i'm quite a, a fan of um moving on so this is the ga 2100 1a1er um, you can pick these up for about £100, even though these are actually really quite hard to get hold of. Yeah, everyone I've... I did a video about this watch already, so there's more information about that, that there. But this is part of their new 
um, Casio's new carbon core range of G-Shocks, where they're mixing uh, carbon fiber in with a resin. I think it allows them to make these watches a bit slimmer and a bit lighter. Um, and it it kind of looks quite different to these other ones. Obviously, you've got analog hands and an analog um, little dial there for the day date for the day I should say and then you've got the date and a little LCD reverse reverse LCD in like a tiny little one there um it's yeah I this out of all these watches this is probably the most comfortable watch it's really really comfortable even though it's quite large it's slim and it really hugs the wrist it's I'm, I'm a big fan of this watch I know some people don't like the look of it they've done a couple of the ones there's a bright red one and one with more clear dials but I like this as you can tell I like the kind of stealthy look so big fan of that one uh, moving on, this is a, a pretty cheap G-Shock. So this is your kind of bog standard G-Shock. This is the DW5600 BBN, and I, I picked this one up for under £50, uh, but you, you can get them for around about that. I think it's, I think it's about $70. Um, I, I lose track of the American um, equivalent. Uh, but in terms of functionality, very basic. Um, I mean, in terms of functionality, all of these watches have timer, they all have alarm, they all have um, stopwatch, they all have day date. Uh, so they all have that basic stuff covered, you know, 12, 24 hour, all the basic stuff. Uh, they've all got that. Uh, and this one's got your standard G-Shock um, type ingredients in terms of functionality. Uh, and so, you know, there's nothing too special about it. Uh, what is fairly unusual, I guess, is this band. Um, you know, it has this kind of slightly, in my opinion, slightly out of sync with the rest of the G-Shock range, uh, G-Shock look, I should say. Uh, lots of sort of chrome and bits and bobs, but it is very comfortable. This sort of nylon, sort of almost like seatbelt type material. It's very comfortable. It rides a little bit higher on the wrist because the band goes behind the, um, the watch and you basically uh, but I do like the minimal face I do like the fact it's very little going on there it's just black 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 <laughs> so yeah that's the reason why I picked that one up and I think it is a real little, little bargain uh, in terms of you know it's a great beater watch you know these three or 200 meters they're all tough as, as old boots in terms of you know you can throw them around and all the rest of it and it'll just they'll just keep on ticking um, like I say sim simple functionality but a good little watch um, and then we have three little Casios here I mean they're all Casios obviously but these are non G-Shot Casios uh, I'm really big fan of this one um, this is the B650WB1BEF um, and these as you can see these are all with uh, metal uh, bracelets um, I think these metal bracelets on these cheaper Casios they, they are kind of hair pinchers they can sort of pull the hairs out of you uh, but they look pretty cool so you know you're, you're sacrificing a little bit of functionality for for the looks um i do have yeah the uh the standard version of this which is a w 217h um and this is really comfortable this is this is my go-to sort of beater watch when i'm you know doing if i'm doing like tough work and i don't mind getting something scratched or something because this is like a 15 pound like 20 dollar watch and it's a the one thing i really like about these these ones is that the, the, the display is super clear and super big you know they've got these these larger uh, numbers um, so very legible uh, great if you're out in the water and you just want to glance down and, and, and see what's on you know see what time it is without sort of squinting twice um, but yeah I'm a really big fan of this form factor I think they've got the sizing right um, and it's it's just yeah I'll probably do a video just about this watch and this range because I'm really a big fan. I wouldn't mind getting a few of these and, and maybe modding them or something. Uh, moving on, this is the A168WEM1EF. And as you can see, a little bit different from the others because it's quite kind of bling. Uh, you can pick these up for about £26. Oh yeah, this one's about £30, by the way. Uh, you can pick these up for about £26 and these for about £28. Um, but yeah, I'm a really big fan of this. Like it really has uh, like such a sort of, I don't know, like 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 you can imagine at the start of Tron, uh, you know, some sort of important businessman would have something something like this. And it would just, you know, it really catches the light. And it's a heck of a watch for the money. It really is a lot of watch for the money. And, it, you know, it's, it's probably almost, a, you, you kind of either need to not care about what people think of you <laughs> to wear a watch like this in terms of um, their opinion, or you need to be really cool so you can pull off these cheaper Casios because it's obviously for some people, it's quite a chic, uh, you know, design choice. 
um, to wear these cheaper Casios because it's kind of like so like anti Rolex and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's difficult to know who can pull these off. But I really like it, and I, I do wear this one. I'm a big fan of this one. Um, moving on, this is the B six four O W B one B E F. Now I think out of all of these, I, I definitely don't wear this one very much. I'm not a huge. I like it as a watch. It's just like kind of as part of my collection because it, again, it, it fits in with that aesthetic that I like. Um, but even though it's very very similar to the one six eight in terms of proportions and size and screen and all the rest of it. The minute you get a smaller watch that has curves, even though it's black and edgy looking, uh, it immediately starts to feel a little bit like a, a lady's watch to me, even though it's black and edgy. I know it sounds a bit odd me saying that, um, but something about this, the combination of the curves and, and the size, I, I just can't pull it off. It just looks a bit odd on me. It looks looks a bit too sort of sort of dainty, even though I don't have great big arms I'm, I'm fairly sort of slender about seven inch wrists but you know medium small um, but yeah I struggle to pull this one off um, and it is my least favorite to wear but I do like it as a watch as part of my little weird little collection um, anyway so yeah that kind of covers all of those so let's so yeah 200 meter 200 meter 200 meters I believe these two are 50 meter water resistance and I think this they call just water resistant or it might be 30 meters. I'll put a correction on the screen if I'm wrong on that one, but certainly this one would be the least likely one I would take adventuring with me. It'd be, it would certainly scratch up the, the quickest and it might get damaged by, you know, cold and snow and water and all the rest of it. Um, I haven't put that to the test, so I don't know, but certainly these these are the beaters. I would say this is a beater. Like I treat this one like absolute crap and it just keeps on ticking. So, you know, that goes into hot showers. It goes into the ocean when I'm kite surfing. Um, it gets scratched up like all of these uh, cheaper Casios. They, de they get scratched up very easily in terms of, you know, it spoils the look, the tarnish um, goes quite quick, but they just keep on working generally from, from my findings. Um, so, yeah, I think these I think the minute you have the, the raised bevel, uh, bezel I should say the raised bezel uh, on the G-Shocks that protects the screen quite a lot and then these are going to be toughened glass anyway they're not sapphire you know they will scratch but they're they're definitely a lot tougher than these these things scratch very easily so it's just you know you, you got to weigh these things up it's a cheaper watch so you, you get what you pay for obviously um, anyways yeah so I thought I'd share these these watches with you like I said I'm probably I might well do a review on the 650 and on the uh, the GWB because that is so feature rich. I mean, that does, you know, I mean, it's not an iPhone, uh, it's not an Apple watch, I should say. So, you know, don't expect uh, miracles, but it does a lot more than what you expect, especially for the, uh, for the, for the money. Um, and yeah. Okay. So let's, let's just put a cup, put them into my, my favorites. I, th I wear this one the most because it's super comfortable. I love wearing this one because of the, you know, the auto light and the functionality. Um, and then this one here is my next favorite and then it'll be that one. This one, this one would be the one that I'd probably wear if I was trying to make, um, you know, if you just want to want something a bit different, you know, if you want to wear something a bit different and, and just feel like you're wearing something, um, that is almost like a, t sounds a bit gay, but almost like a talking point type thing. You know, like it's, it's such a, it's such a sort of a eighties look like it just, you know, catches the light like crazy. So yeah. It, is this has the cool factor <laughs> in, a, in a weird kind of way but yeah definitely for comfort i i think this is a, a great watch and for functionality this one but i, I like them all you know I, I like them all um and if you want yeah i would say if you want a cheap beater casio i love these uh these w uh 217 h's i think they're great it's a great size and yeah just uh yeah something about that that just that just floats my boat for for a cheap watch, if you're buying it for for some young lad or something like that, these are brilliant. Um, anyway, guys, yeah, there you go. I'll leave that there. But I just thought I'd um I'd share these odd little watches with you. And yeah, some of you are probably thinking, why on earth do you collect shitty little watches? <laughs> but for me, I quite like them. You know, I like I do like you know proper watches as well. I've just picked up um, a lovely little handmade uh, strap from my Seiko. A uh, new Seiko 5, um, yeah, handmade leather uh, strap by some chap in Germany. I'm uh, really, really big fan of that too. And there's a couple other watches on my 
my radar. But yeah, there's something about this 80s thing. Like just imagine running in some little, you know, eight year old in the playground back then wearing one of these, it would melt your mind. <laughs> and I know that it's not the 80s anymore, but I still have that lodged in my in the back of my head. And so this is what this is part of the appeal, I think. Anyway, guys, I'll leave that there. I hope that was uh, vaguely interesting. And yeah, if you've got any questions down below, stick it in the, the comments. And like I said, I'll, I'll probably try to get a video on these two done at a later date because yeah, these are great watches with loads of um, loads of goodness just pouring out of them. Peace out guys and I'll catch you later.